Okay. Anyway, the 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 uh, the message I was trying to convey is that uh, um, by introduce uh, extra maybe degree of freedom in the, or maybe sometimes I call auxiliary spaces. I I uh, read. I relax the, the, the equation which I have to solve. Like a three by three equals four by four. And uh, in the end, uh, one of the guiding principles here is that uh, if there's anything in your system that looks suspicious or relevant, <laughs> throw them in. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, it is always works to some degree. So when you want to solve uh, an equation, you say, oh, maybe the small singular weight, or uh, there's something more physical relevant. You bring them in and dump it into space. <laughs> and uh, then you can see improvement. It is a universal principle. And uh, it uh, always works to some degree. I'm not saying that uh, it depends on when you want to. So this is the things I'm trying to tell you. Okay, suppose, uh, uh, okay, let me just re uh, recap what we, we had done before. We are trying to solve 15. But I, I, I do a space decomposition. You write these things as that guy. And uh, uh, you make it a bigger system. Now for a bigger system, presumably you know how to, you just, for a bigger system, you use the Jacobi or Gauss side. There's only two methods in the world. Okay? <laughs> Jacobi and Gauss side. Uh, the reason Jacobi Gauss said doesn't work so well because you're solving the wrong system. Wow. <laughs> because, uh, if you relax, Jacobi Gauss will do the job. That's the message. I'm going to show you at the end of the, at the rest of, uh, of these two weeks. The main idea is that how do you relax? Which is, uh, uh, then you, you, you do this. We have all the mathematics. Now the question is that, how, okay, suppose. Uh, so we need some mathematical language. So we have the subsurface of VI, so we just say we have a sub-problem called A of I. It's, it's a matrix on the, on your, what I call auxiliary space or subspace. For example, in this three by three, four by four is just one dimension, okay. It's just AI is a diagonal. So then you have to solve this AI. It's the universe, approximate universe. I don't know if you recognize that uh, in Jacobi Gauss-Seidel method, it doesn't always give you the best job if you solve that one exactly. Do you know if, why this Jacobi, this uh, Gauss-Seidel, the Gauss-Seidel, every time you, you solve the uh, diagonal, you invert the diagonal, right? And the, the, the SOR says that uh, you should not just uh, invert. Actually, after you invert, you have to put a parameter there. So, so the, the, when you do the subspace solvers, it doesn't have to be the exact. Okay, this is something important to know. And uh, so you can take the, if you, you know, it, it's going to be useful if you, if you know a little bit of functional analysis. But in Stanford, you, have a, you teach a functional analysis. Okay. This is how many, you have eight courses or six courses? Which <laughs> <laughs> but when you do linear algebra, it is uh, helpful to know functional analysis. And uh, uh, the, 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 the situation is like this. We are solving finite dimensional problem, right? We are solving linear algebra. But we are interested in dealing in bigger problems. The biggest one is infinity, okay? But you want to see the asymptotic behavior of a, of a problem of size n when n approaches infinity. Whenever solve an equation with infinity, we do, we do approximation first. But in order to know the limiting behavior, you have to know infinite dimensional space, which will be Barnabas space, Hilbert space. But I, I so I think, uh, in work analysis, in my opinion, you have to study infinite dimensional space if you want to do large data. So they are uh, big data very well. <laughs> uh, so th th this will be the adjoint, and uh, 
the PI with the pi i star, the, uh, So you for pi i is uh, is from v i to v. The, the prime will go to prime to prime. But again, if you take the dual of the L two, everything will, will be identified. <coughs> the v i prime will be equal to v i. Uh, if you are interested, I can maybe I can schedule a different session to talk about prime. <laughs> This dual is such a confusing thing in the literature. But anyway, uh, so then you look at the, the when the pi i in, uh, in the multi group example is usually like a prolongation. When you take a prime, it's called a restriction. Okay. And uh, then you have this, uh, 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 which a i is going to be symmetrical positive definite in the subspace, so you have the dual. So that's why highest. So it, uh, the, the one of the, the important identity, this is just uh, you check this by, the, by definition. Your pi i prime, pi i prime. This is important one. Let me just do it for you. So I didn't do anything. What happened? No. <laughs> Card into my computer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so the uh, pi prime a you call the a i p i. <coughs> so the idea is that you can just prove this for now. Uh, do I need to prove? Uh, yeah, this is the uh, a i p i u i v i. Pi is from where to where? Pi is v to, huh? So that's equal to Pi to I V I. That's from the Ai. Uh, that's by definition equal to. Something is wrong again. So many hyper. Sorry. Pi i from v i to v. Pi i prime is equal to what? V prime. Sorry. Equal to v i prime. Okay. So then uh, this is equal to a of u i i. That's equal to. AIPI. So, uh, and uh, you got the typo. <laughs> uh, so, this one is true. So, now uh, I have this uh, expanded system. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do Jacob, yeah, go outside that, okay? That's not really true. But right here, I need to do a block Jacobi block outside there because uh, I have this uh, subspace I treat them as a block. So when you do the outside there, my so you do write this as d plus l plus u, okay? All right? So this will be a lower triangular matrix. This is the upper triangular matrix. Now the question is that uh, what would be the right version of uh, Jacobi outside there? Then this is, you, you gotta remember, you have to remember that, uh, you have to remember, this is important to know. Uh, how do you, 
So this AI, so this is the, uh, this is pretty much covers most of this uh, iterative method, uh, like multi-grade domain decomposition. This slide is pretty much here. Uh, but I can tell you, all right, so what is this uh, D? The diagonal of D tilde, this is the diagonal of A, right? A tilde, which is equal to A11, A11, A, J, J. This, by definition, is actually equal to A1, A2, A, J. Okay, this is the, my AI operator I defined before, okay? This AI is from VI to V prime. Now, if a D, uh, now, this one is presumably inverse. That's equal to A1 inverse, A2 inverse, A, J inverse. That would be, <coughs> this would be, has approximately, you know, the inverse is like Ri, okay? This is my Ri. This is my R2 time. Okay. If you remember, this is a modified Gauss side down, what I call, maybe they call it S or R. Recall. This is a no omega D inverse. This is kind of, you can think of an omega inverse. D inverse. Cross R. This is a B. This is no omega. No, this is no omega inverse times D, sorry. D inverse. Oh, this cross R, sorry. This is Gauss side up, the, the, the modified Gauss side up. The modified Gauss side up, you take the B to be equal to that. Here, so this D, if you look at this D, that means D tilde inverse would be approximate to like R, wait a minute, this is, or D by yourself, or a tilde inverse. The D tilde inverse is approximate by R tilde. Okay, then you have D is like R tilde inverse. So you just, this is supposed to be D inverse. It should be D here, right? If you do the exact Gauss side L. But I want the subspace I have approximate, so this one you could put D R tilde inverse here. This is very important. <coughs> okay, if you do really the gauss seidel method, R2 that can be D theta in the exact one, okay? Otherwise, you can do the generical. You don't have to solve that one exactly. So that's pretty much the, the uh, so you, you, you do the, uh, I have this relaxed problem, the expanded problem. I do either Jacobi, or Gauss Seidel. It's not the exact one I say, I call it modified. I don't know in the literature, what, what, how you teach this, Eric? Uh, 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 you do S O R, how do you call this? Yeah, we call it S O R, yeah. Yeah, but S O R, they always, this O means uh, over. I don't know, the, the somehow, because of the, the nature of five point stencil, they always do O, no U. <laughs> <laughs> successive over relaxation, this one. This also should be successive under relaxation. There's a discrimination there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so, we call it relaxed Gauss side, maybe. Or I call it modified Gauss side. I don't know what's the word. Right? But the thing, the idea is that when you do the diagonal inverse, you want to do some modifications. See? Well, the way to do the relaxation thing is, well, you can do the previous one, take an average. But that's not how I modify these things. When I modify this, and you, you want to go to the space solver, you introduce some parameter to somehow to offer some uh, extra degree of freedom to make your solver behavior better. 
But uh, I'm, I, I'm going to spend uh, you know, a few more seconds here to emphasize the transition. First of all, let's go, let me see if we can go back. Maybe that's too, too, too much to fall back. First of all, when you do a, a gauss side method, how do you do a gauss side method in my abstract framework to a modified gauss side or SOR? It is by modifying the diagonal units. But this is how it's been taught in linear algebra book. Linear algebra book, you take an average, OK? You take the previous, you take the relaxed figure. But that cannot be generalized to subspaces. So the right notion of thinking about it is that when you do this subspace solver and the diagonal, you relax there. You you do some kind of approximate solvers there. Okay. You may wonder why I can I when when I do things in the subspace on the diagonal, why I do not solve exactly? Because this is an approximation anyway. You solve an approximate problem exactly, it may not be a good idea. <laughs> you want to solve an approximately in a, in, a, in a way that helps a regional problem. Because you, so you don't want it necessarily, so you don't have to actually, you should not, in this particular case, to solve the approximate so the, the, the thing on the subspace because it, when you when you when you call when you correct the residual on the subspace is only a certain component of your solution get recovered and is uh, corrected so anyway so I, I i i repeat myself so many times because you have to really get used to this is the right way to extend the gaussado in a in a block uh, in a general situation like what I'm doing here. It's not like the linear algebra book says take the average. It's what well, it, it, that's how it was uh, derived originally. But so if you do this, another question is that um, this is what the uh, uh, when you have this expanded system, I want to say that the symmetrized one should be symmetrical positive definite. You see uh, <coughs> I so this R2 term, let me tell you, if you do the uh, uh, gauss seidel or Jacobi, I, here's the deal, OK? Uh, earlier in the lecture, I tell you, what is the sufficient condition for a problem to be converted? Is this approximate universe? I used to have a B, this is B bar should be symmetric positive definite. Here I have a very special B, which is my R. This is my B, OK? OK? Uh, so the as soon as this one is going to be, uh, the B bar is symmetric positive definite, but this one, it turns out uh, will be reduced to this one here. This is like the diagonal. If you really have the diagonal, this is, if this R bar is diagonal universe, this whole thing would be the diagonal. I don't know if it's diagonal universe. But anyway, this will be the necessary condition. R bar, if this one is sufficient I mean, symmetrical value definitely, then they, they my my then my, my, my uh, iterative method will convert. This will be the, uh, uh, this will be one of the main theorem. I just, uh, let me see. Uh, Well, I have five more minutes? Yeah, you have 20. Huh? OK. Yeah, five more minutes. And uh, I'm going to probably stop right here. The, the, uh, I want to explain to you that uh, because the next time I probably, this is one of the most important results, uh, the second result. Now it's called, uh, I, I did this in the Journal of AMS paper in 2002 with uh, 
the colleague, now they call it XZ identity. The way to go is that um, you basically, it is it, considered to be a mystery. Our, there's a lot of complaint from our paper. People could not understand our paper and then because the proof is so complicated. <laughs> but after all these years, then we realized it's just Gauss-Seidel method. It's just a linear hybrid. Okay, let me uh, uh, tell you the, the, the power of mathematics, and uh, I'm going to come back to that. One of the, 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 the uh, I don't have any of these things I want to see. Uh, oops. Uh, for example, uh, I need to uh, modify the slides a little bit, but uh, anyway, uh, in the end, uh, I'm going to have uh, this uh, identity. This is the identity what I'm going to have to show to you. And uh, from this identity, what I, what I will actually derived is going to be purely linear algebraic calculation. If you wish, I can do it in a functional infinite dimensional space. But uh, to get you motivated, <coughs> to get you motivated, let me just tell you what I exercise I've been doing here. I take a, a generic equation AU equal to F. Then I, I take a, I expand it. Then I do some kind of gauss Seidel. Then I'm going to do some manipulation, get an identity about convergence. That's all I'm doing. Then I get some results. OK. Now, this is, uh, takes a couple of decades to get to this point. I gave you one homework to think about it. You, you started function analysis, right? Everybody started function analysis. OK, let me tell you this. If you take, um, I give you this function analysis kind of results. I take a P of i is from some Hilbert space. To, this is a projection, OK? This is going to be only for those of you interested in function analysis. Prove some function analysis by using linear algebra for outside there. Okay, if this is a projection, you know projection, right? If I take two projection, is this a P1 times P2 is still a projection or not? If you take two projection, this is a two, this are subspaces. This is a Hilbert space. This is a subspace. If I take two projections, is the product of two projections necessarily a projection? Yes or no? What do you think of that? Uh, yes. Yes? <laughs> so <laughs> the projection has certainly, uh, it is self adjoint, right? Projection has to be self adjoint. This is a, a PIUBI, this is in the H, is equal to UBI, right? So it's a self adjoint. Uh, and the pi square you call the pi, but when you took the p1, p1 times p2, is this a scale self adjoint? So that's a, the the is still self adjoint if the commute. Okay. All right. Now the question is that uh, this is called. Uh, but Neumann has this called the in the in the computer science. This is all these things. Uh, this is called H one, H two. The for Neumann says that. Uh, all right, oh, this is not good. This is too good. I need an angle. This this angle is. Uh, this H two. For Neumann says that uh, if you take something here, if you if you project, that's the projection, right? The next time you get H two. You do like that, then you go this way, huh? You eventually, this will be my H1, 
in tensor K H2. So if if uh, P1 equal to P2, P1, then P1, P2, it is a projection, okay? It's equal to PH1 intersect H2, right? It, 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 this is just a linear, linear function analysis. In general, P1, P2, this is to PJ. If you take uh, M's power, that would convert to the projection of H1, H2. This is so. This is called alternative projection method. If you go to the Google, you tell, this is a, a method is commonly used in, in, in practice. And the M U, J equal to two, one noima. This is greater one noima. Nineteen thirty something. Let's let's say, say this way. I don't know. It's, it's, he proved this result for n equal to, to j equal to 2. And uh, it has been a long time, it's an open problem, how do you do general m, a general j? Uh, especially the way it, uh, as you can see, this depends on the angle. Huh? If the angle is 90 degree, do you get one iteration, you get there. Uh, um, So this is a long trivial result. But somehow we manage to say, if you understand my proof of Gauss side of purely linear algebra, you prove this very easily. This is considered in the approximation theorem to be a very difficult theorem to prove. And uh, uh, you know, Method of alternating projection, they call it MAP, like a map. And uh, lots of papers on that. And uh, if you're interested in functional analysis, again, this is the homework you can do. Okay. Uh, um, but this is going to come out my Gauss side element. Okay. Uh, so do not underestimate this simple mathematics I do here, because uh, <laughs> I just want to show you there's something deep going on. Uh, after all these years, I realized this is the right language to do <laughs> iterative method. Uh, I'm going to just have probably stop here and uh, we can continue. So, uh, so I will print out the slides next time. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you.